Have you ever had one of those times that you were reluctant to do something you know that you probably should? If so, then you're like many of us, and this is a great place for you to tune in to today. Hi, I'm Ken Hagler, and I'm pastor here at Anchor Park United Methodist Church as we worship together today and continue and bring our uh, sermon series, Easter Can Be Your Story, to a conclusion today with a sermon titled, Go. It's a great one to tune into, and I'm glad that you're here. If you want to, make sure that you subscribe while you're here and give us a thumbs up. We're going to be over in the chat room, whether that's down below on your phone or on your computer, over to the side on the screen, that we're going to be sharing different things. Folks are welcoming one another right now and taking time to pray in a little bit, and you may have a concern or prayer request you'd like to share. We'd love to hear that. If you're tuning in later, if you leave a comment, I'll get back to that as well and be happy to pray with you anytime. There's a number of links in our comment section below that you may want to take note of. We've been celebrating our graduates recently, too, so those names are going to show up on the screen, and maybe you have a graduate you'd like to celebrate as well. We'd love to add them to our list of folks that we are celebrating as a church. There's a number of things happening within the life of the church, but those announcements are going to come at the end of the service, so stay tuned if you want to do that or check our mini link, which you can just get in a PDF form down below. I want to offer a very special welcome today to the folks at Homer United Methodist Church. As Lisa Talbot is going to be on sabbatical right now, we are excited that you all are joining with us in worship today as well. So thank you for coming and tuning in, and it's great to have you with us, and hope that you get a lot out of today's service as you join with us. Let's talk with God. Hey God, we've come together today. Because we're your church and we're excited that things are moving towards a time that we're getting ready to open up again. But we also have been excited because we've grown in our faith during this time as we've done this stuff online. We've learned and we've grown and we've been shaped by this transformational period. God, as we move forward and we go to the places that you're calling us, may we be filled with your spirit and seek to be the people that you've called us to be. We ask these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, let's continue to worship and the message is coming right up. He was hesitant, as most people probably are anytime you walk into a room where you're not familiar with the folks around. But he'd been invited to come and join this study that was taking place on that evening. So the young pastor came in, found a seat there among everybody else, 
and awaited the time when the teacher was going to come forward. When they came up, they opened a book. It was a book written by Martin Luther, the former Roman Catholic monk that had founded and been the impetus really behind the Protestant Revolution. He had written a commentary on the book of Romans, and that was the book that they were reading from tonight, in particular, the preface. As they were sitting there listening, the young pastor realized something was changing, something was different about him, and in those moments, his life was changed. How? Well, John Wesley would record these words back on May 23rd, of 1738. Let me share them with you. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sin, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. So that was John Wesley's story. This is Aldersgate Sunday. It's also Pentecost Sunday. So let's look and listen to the words that come from the book of Acts when the disciples encounter the Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, all of the Lord's followers were together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from heaven like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions, and a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone, and they began speaking whatever languages the Spirit let them speak. Many religious Jews from every country in the world were living in Jerusalem, and when they heard this noise, a crowd gathered. But they were surprised because they were hearing everything in their own languages. They were excited and amazed and said, Don't all these who are speaking come from Galilee? Why are we hearing them in our very own languages? Some of us are from Parthia, Media and Elam. Others are from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya near Cyrene, Rome, Crete and Arabia. (laughs) Some of us were born Jews and others have chosen to be Jews, and yet we all hear them using our own language to tell the wonderful things God has done. Everyone was excited and confused. Some of them even kept asking each other, what does this all mean? Others made fun of the Lord's followers and said, Ah, they're drunk. Peter speaks to the crowd. Peter stood with the eleven apostles and spoke in a loud and clear voice to the crowds. Friends and everyone else living in Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I have to say. You are wrong to think that these people are drunk. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning, but this is what God led the prophet Joel to say. When the last days come, I will give my spirit to everyone. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will have dreams. In those days, I will give my spirit to my servants, both men and women, and they will prophesy. I will perform miracles in the sky above and wonders on the earth below. There will be blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will turn dark and the moon will be as red as blood before the great and wonderful day of the Lord appears. Then the Lord will save everyone who asks for his help. If Easter is our story, then Pentecost is the first sentence. With what happens to the disciples when they meet Jesus, all the way to when John Wesley encounters the Holy Spirit. Transformation takes place when the Holy Spirit arrives on the scene. Things happen. Transformation and new life, hope, is kindled in the hearts and minds of people. Awaiting change, who've been hoping, who are ready who are longing for something new to happen. If Easter is to be our story, then Pentecost must be the first sentence. 
Now, you may have been wondering about these couple of numbers that are up here. Well, from Anchorage, Alaska, all the way to Jerusalem, it's 6,019 miles. From Anchorage, Alaska to Aldersgate Street, it's 4,487. But you know what? This isn't where we're called to go. And when we look at the text here, it's so important that we don't have to go to be in Jerusalem or go find Aldersgate Street for renewal to take place in our lives. The writer and preacher A.W. Tozer said these words about the Holy Spirit. Only the Spirit can show us what is wrong with us. Only the Spirit can prescribe the cure. Only the Spirit can save us from the numbing unreality of spiritless Christianity. Only the Spirit can show us God the Father and God the Son. There is no cure apart from the invitation. Yes, an invitation of power from above. So when we look at this passage of Scripture from Acts and we see how the disciples get transformed by the Spirit coming into them and indwelling them, unique things happen, and it parallels in many ways an Old Testament story that we can look back on about the Tower of Babel, a time when all of humanity was wanting to build our way up to the kingdom of God. And God said there was not going to be any of that. And it was at that point that God scattered humanity and put different tongues in people's mouths so that they would be divided and we couldn't come together in such a way that we would try to be grow, grow arrogant and be full of pride. Pentecost stands in contrast to the Tower of Babel. It stands here in a place where when the disciples have the Holy Spirit come into them, isn't it unique that the people in Jerusalem were sitting there from all over the world listening to the gospel being shared in their own tongue by people who weren't from their places. They said, well, these guys must be drunk. But that's not what Peter said. In fact, he made it really clear. Something has happened to us. We have been changed. And what has happened is that Jesus Christ has come into us and the Holy Spirit is now indwelling inside our lives, in our hearts. And we have been transformed. We have been made new. We have been called to go into the world. Isn't it interesting that in a day and a time where we are so focused on, it seems to be, the differences that we have, it's actually here in the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that we are united as people. That's what God is doing. He's creating a church, a community that didn't exist before. And it didn't matter where you might come from, you can hear the gospel. You can come to know and have God indwelling in you. There is nothing in the way of that now. It's all been broken down. We've been trying to build our way up, and we still do in so many of the religions of our world today. It's, it's us trying to make our way to heaven. But in truth, Pentecost is saying, God is coming down. The disciples waited. They did exactly what Jesus said. Is it any wonder that in our world we struggle to find peace? Is it any wonder that wars and conflict continue to divide us? Is it any wonder that we continue to allow things that are so simple to separate us from family, from friends? In fact, what we're looking at here in this passage of Scripture is exactly what we need to hear to experiencing the unity and the peace that we all want. We want to know those things. And so we need the Spirit of God to come upon us. The disciples were faithful in listening to what Jesus said. Finally, after all these times of Jesus saying to do things, they finally went and waited. And when they did, the Spirit comes. The Spirit comes in power, transformational power, power of hope in such a way that the world begins to be changed by these followers of Jesus. It was a cold winter day, as most winter days are, and the snow had been falling for quite some time and the temperatures had dropped low, so everything was freezing. Two friends 
who loved to play out in the snow together, loved to explore together, met up, got all their snow gear on, and took off into the woods to go exploring the winter wonderland that was around them. They took off down the trails and through the trees that they always loved to go through and play in all the time. Well, they, as they were playing, they ran by a creek. One of their favorite places to play and to throw a fishing pole and a rod and reel in to see if they could catch fish during the summer months. They, they saw the creek. It was kind of wide. It was kind of deep most of the time, but now it was frozen. One of the boys said to his friend, kind of sly grin, do you think it's frozen? Do you think it's frozen enough to hold me? I don't know. So the young man went out and first he got a stick, tapped it. Sounds kind of frozen. Okay. Then he went and he tapped his foot on it. Yeah, it feels kind of frozen. The friend standing back said, okay. He said, I bet it's frozen. I bet it's frozen enough that I can walk on it. He looked back at his buddy and his buddy said, okay. Then put both feet on it. The young man said, oh, I'm not going to do that. And he said, then you just believe. You don't have faith. You know, part of what I think is troublesome in our time is that we don't have faith. And believing in the Holy Spirit takes faith. It takes moving. It takes going. It means stepping out. You don't need to have a call to ministry to be a pastor or a missionary to be a person of faith. It means putting both feet on the ice. It means acting on what you say you believe. It means that you don't stand on the shore any longer. You see, Peter, this one that stood before the crowds of people on Pentecost Sunday to preach, was the same one who, when Jesus was walking on the water, Peter said, Call to me, Lord, and I'll step out of the boat. And he walked on water for a little bit, and then he fell. But no one else got out of the boat. It was only Peter. Here we see in these words, this same calling. Easter can be our story, but Pentecost has got to be the first sentence. You don't need to go to Jerusalem. You don't need to go to Aldersgate Street. You don't need to take another Bible study. You don't need to take disciple. You don't need to go to seminary or college or something like that. These disciples had not done those things at all. And yet they believed and they put their belief into action, into faith. Jesus would tell them to go. You see, for Easter to be our story and Pentecost to be the starting sentence, then we have to go. We are not meant to stay. We wait for a time, but we are to be people that go. It's that time. That's our call. You can't sit still anymore. It's time to make Easter your story. It's time to put your whole faith and hope into the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the promise that Jesus said. For Jesus is always true to the promises that he gives. I call on you now. Where is God leading? Where is the Spirit nudging? Will you make Easter your story? Then go. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
as we come together today, we have a chance to talk with God, a chance to pray together. And even though this is recorded ahead of time, we're gathered right here. And this prayer is a real prayer. If you want to share your concerns, even if it's just saying, I don't want to say what it is, it's unspoken, you can put that in the comment section in the chat room, and we'll join you in prayer. Maybe you visit here at another time and you need prayer, this is a prayer for you. Make it your prayer. As I pray it, we'll have a chance to even pause during that time for you to be focused in your prayer. Would you join with me as we talk with God today? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, come and live within as you did on Pentecost where you transformed these disciples and sent them into the world. As you let John Wesley know that his sins were forgiven and that he moved after that day with an assurance of salvation on Aldersgate Street. May we be in dwelling temples of your spirit. May you live within. May you move within. May you transform us to be more and more like Jesus so that the world might know your grace your love, and the freedom that comes with being a disciple of Jesus Christ. As we gather here today, we pray. We pray for our world, our nation, for our leaders. We pray for peace in our time, and not just for peace, but we pray that you would make us peacemakers. It's not time for us to just pray for things, but it's time to be the ones who embody Jesus in our world. May we begin to look and see the fruits of the Spirit in our lives and be transformed in such a way that other people look at us and say, that person, wow, that must be what Jesus is like. Not perfect, but real. Because we can't be Jesus, but we sure can be in the image of Jesus our Lord. As we come here today, we come remembering that part of the call of being the church is to be a people who loves one another, that loves even our enemies. God, we want to take to you the things that are on our hearts, so right now we're going to take a pause and share our concerns with you and with one another. There's never enough time. But we have you. And the promise of scriptures are that you do not leave us or forsake us. And you are with us as we go from this place. And you send us out. We aren't intended to stay here. We must go. So as we come here in these moments, God, and we lift to you the things that are on our hearts, we give thanks for all the ways that you've heard us when we've prayed before, when we've shared with you the concerns of our heart. And today we trust that you have heard everything that we have lifted to you so that we might let them go and take the steps forward in our life that we need to. We come and we pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, it's easy to say that we care about others. But if our words aren't backed up in our actions, then in many ways it doesn't have a lot of meaning. In 1 John chapter 3, we hear these words that John, one of those disciples filled by the Spirit, shares with us. 
He said, if anyone has material possessions and sees someone in need, but has no pity on that person, how can the love of God be in them? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. You know, as a church, we're called to gather together to share possessions so that we might meet the needs of others. You probably have done that in simple ways. Maybe you've helped somebody write a resume. Maybe you've opened the door for somebody. Maybe you've been able to help somebody financially that couldn't afford something in the grocery store. There's all different ways that we can do that. And when you give your offering here at church, one of the things that that does is it goes to help support the ministries, both of our church, here in our community, and beyond. You help to clothe those that are naked, those that are hungry. You help to feed. All along the way, you make things happen because of your gifts. And that's really what our offering time is, a chance for us to pull together with our resources to do the ministry and the work that we're called to do so that we can go into the world to share the gospel with all who are in need. On the screen, you'll see a slide that has different ways that you might be able to give here at Anchor Park. Now, if you're a guest and a visitor on here, we don't expect you to support and, and to give today, though if God's put it on your heart, we welcome that. But if you are a regular attender and, and have been a part of the ministries here, we are getting ready to open and we need your support as we prepare to move forward into this new season of ministry and opportunity. That's right, folks. We are getting ready to reopen to worship. June 1 is kind of the day that we're kind of setting aside. In the first Sunday of June, we're going to be gathering together and we're working hard to make those things happen. One of the things I'm going to encourage you to do on that first Sunday of June, bring your lawn chair. You know, just have it in the car. Just be ready. I'm not sure exactly what things are going to look like, and as it gets closer, pay attention. You can follow the links to our website at anchorpark.org, uh, and you can call and ask as we get closer to time, and I'll be letting you know hopefully that last Sunday what's going to be happening. But we're going to be making time to worship together. There will be guidelines that we have to follow regarding masking and distancing, but we are going to worship together, and we're going to be doing it week in and week out moving forward. That's the plan. So be ready for that, and your gifts make a difference there. I hope that you know that because your gifts have made our dial uh, by phone possible, that sermon by phone ministry that has been so active during these last few months when we discovered it. Your likes, comments, and subscribes, those are so very important as you've been able to get out word about Anchor Park when people search online for a church involved in their community. You've been making a difference in every single one of those ways. Don't stop. We're actually going to be continuing to have this time on Sunday mornings. So there will be a both and, both in person as well as in these places online on our YouTube channel. You've made that possible. And because of your faithfulness, it's time for us to go. It's time for us to go and to do the work that God has called us to do. What does that look like for you? I don't know, but I'm going to be here with you on that journey. So, as you go, do no harm, do good, stay in love with God, for this is the way. Join with us in our closing song and the announcements that will follow. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go. Yeah.